Okay, in this lecture, we are going to go over the data types in MySQL, starting with numeric and then our date, time, and then our text. And then once we have gone over the data types, we are going to create our first table and then go over the insert and select queries. So first up, our numeric data types. So we have integer types, int, tiny int, small int, medium int, and big int. They can all be signed or unsigned. Um, and we can specify our width of up to 11 digits, 4 digits, 5 digits, 9 digits, or 20 digits in our big int. And if you really want to see the um, specific numbers that you can go to and from for our signed and unsigned, you can. However, that's a very big number for me to read out, so we'll move on to our floating point, our double precision, and our decimal. So our floating point number uh, that cannot be unsigned, you can define the uh, display length, M, and the number of decimals. This is not required and will def default to 10, 2, where 2 is the number of decimals and 10 is the number of digits, including decimals. Decimal precision can go to 24 places for a float. And then we have our double precision floating point number that cannot be unsigned. You can define the display length M and the number of decimals D. This is not required and will default to 16.4, where 4 is the number of decimals. Decimal precision can go to 53 places for a double. Real is a synonym for double. And then we have our decimal, MD, an unpacked floating point number that cannot be unsigned. In the unpacked decimals, each decimal corresponds to one byte, defining the display length m and the number of decimals d is required numeric is a synonym for decimal okay then we have our date and time data types so our date is a date in yyyy so year month day format between 1001101 and 9999 for example december the 30th 1973 would be stored as 1973 30. And then we have our date time. A date and time combination in a year, month, day, hour, minute, second format between one th the year 1000, the month 01 and the day 01 and zero hours, zero minutes and zero seconds and 9999 year, 12 month and 31 day and just before midnight. For example, 3.30 in the afternoon on December 30th, 1973 would be stored as 1973-12.30-15.30-0. And then we have our timestamp between midnight January 1st, 1970 and sometime in 2037. This looks like the previous date time format, only without the hyphens between the numbers. 3.30 in the afternoon on December 30th, 1973 would be stored as... 1973-12-30-15-30-0-0, which is our year, month, day, hour, minutes, and seconds. And then we have our time, which stores the time in a hour, minute, second format, the same as over here, but without the date. And then our year, M, which stores a year in a two-digit or a four-digit format if the length is specified as two. For example, year two. Year can be between 1970 and 2069, 70 to 69. If the length is specified as four, then a year can be 1901 to 2055. 2155, sorry. The default length is four. And then finally, we have our string types. So we have our chars, our var chars, our blob or text, our tiny blob or tiny text, our medium blob or medium text, and long blob or long text. So, char is a fixed length string between 1 and 255 characters in length. For example, char 5, right padded with spaces to the specified length when stored. Defining a length is not required, but the default is 1. Vaja, a variable length string between 1 and 255 characters in length. For example, varchar, you must define a length when creating a varchar field. And then we have our blob and or text, a field with a maximum length of 65535 characters, 65,000 characters. Blobs are binary large objects and are used to store large amounts of binary data, such as images or other types of files. Fields defined as text also hold large amounts of data. The difference between the two is that 
The sorts and comparisons of the stored data are case sensitive on blobs and are not case sensitive on text fields. You do not specify a length with blob or text. And then we have our tiny blob or tiny text. Uh, a blob or text column with a maximum length of 255 characters. You do not need to specify a length. Then we have our medium blob or medium text. A blob or text column with a maximum length of 16777215 characters. You do not need to specify a length with medium. And then we have our long blob or long text. A blob or text column with a maximum length of characters. You do not specify a length with long. Okay, so now we're going to go over creating a table in MySQL. So our create table, we have um we will use create table and then our table name and then a column name and column type. And we will separate these by commas as well. So in our example, we've got create table, tutorials, TBL, so tu tutorials table. And we have our tutorial ID, int not null auto increment. So this is saying the column is called tutorial ID of data type int. We The uh, column does not accept null and it will auto increment. So as the data is input, as sorry, as a as data is inserted into the table, this column will auto increment. So it will go one, two, three, and so on. Usually used for IDs, as you can see here. And then we have a tutorial title. We're just going to take a varchar of length 100. And again, it cannot be null. And then a tutorial author, varchar 40. And once again, it cannot be null. And then our submission date of type date. And we're going to set our primary key to tutorial ID as this is the auto incrementing. So the field attribute not null is being used because we do not want this field to be null. So if a user will try to create a record with a null value, then MySQL will raise an error. Field attribute auto increment tells MySQL to go ahead and add the next available number to the ID field. And then our keyword primary key is used to define a column as a primary key. You cannot use multiple columns separated by a comma to define. So you can use multiple columns separated by a comma to define a primary key. Insert and select queries in MySQL. So we're going to start with the insert. So our format is insert into and then our table name. And then we're going to put the fields in brackets separated by commas. So here we would have tutorial ID, tutorial name, tutorial author separated by commas and then values. And then in these brackets, we're going to have the values to input in the same order. So we so we would put one and then our tutorial name being MySQL data types and then our tutorial author and so on. To insert string data types, it is required to keep all the values into double or single quotes, for example, a value. And then we have our select query. So our format is select and then the fields and then our from and then our table name or table names. And then we have our where clause and our offset and limit. You can use one or more tables separated by comma to include various conditions using a WHERE clause, but the WHERE clause is an optional part of the SELECT command. You can fetch one or more fields in a single SELECT command. You can specify STAR in place of fields. In this case, SELECT will return all the fields. You can specify any condition using the WHERE clause. You can specify an offset using offset where from WHERE SELECT. Will <clears throat> where select will start returning records by default the offset is starts at zero you can limit the number of returns using the limit attribute again that is it for this lecture in the next lecture talon will be going over firebase for you